Good afternoon. I'm a professor of history in the University of London and director of one of the world's leading centres dedicated to the study of anti-Semitism. I am grateful to the UN High Representative and Under Secretary General Moratinos for the invitation to participate today. For more than a decade, through research, public policy work, seminars, conferences and publications, my institute has drawn attention to the connections between anti-Semitism and other forms of religious intolerance and racialization, Islamophobia in particular. The word anti-Semitism entered common language 140 years ago, first of all in Germany. At this time, Jews had won equal rights in Germany. The word anti-Semitism referred specifically to the attack being made on that new one equality. From the beginning, the campaign against anti-Semitism was a campaign for minority rights. Anti-Semitism was a European problem at the end of the 19th century. It is a global co concern and threat today. Yet, when we turn to address anti-Semitism within the framework of universal human rights, we face an obstacle, namely the exclusive reliance of some governments and some intergovernmental bodies on the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism the definition which was referenced earlier by Rabbi Baker. This definition carries three fatal problems. First, it makes no reference to the universal fight against all forms of discrimination and bigotry in which anti-Semitism presents a severe and persistent case. Second, the definition is widely misrepresented, not least by its supporters. Third, the definition serves as a basis for conflating the interests of Israel with the struggle against anti-Semitism. Too often, legitimate criticism of Israel's treatment of the Palestinians is decried as anti-Semitic. Last month, the United Nations Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Intolerance drew attention to this grave tendency, doing so in the same report which is cited in the concept note for this session. Of course, Israel, like any other state, will defend its interests. In doing so, however, Israel and its supporters have misappropriated the struggle against anti-Semitism. Jews in Israel are not a minority. They comprise the majority population in a state which discriminates against Palestinians, both within its internationally recognized boundaries and egregiously so in the occupied territories where the state continues to exercise dominion over Palestinians. Opposition to Israel's actions sometimes generates anti-Semitic speech and violence and targets Jews outside of Israel. We must always be alert to this and always counter it. Nevertheless, we lose our way when the struggle against anti-Semitism, a movement intended to protect Jewish minorities from intolerance and violence, becomes closely aligned with the political interests of the State of Israel. For this reason, in 2020, I joined a group of academic experts whose goal was to devise an alternative to the IHRA definition and to do so in a way that builds on universal human rights and anti-racist principles. The outcome is the Jerusalem Declaration on Anti-Semitism, published in March, 2020, in March 2021, and signed by 350 scholars in Jewish studies, anti-Semitism studies, and related fields, many of them leading experts. Anti-Semitism, we say, is prejudice, discrimination, hostility or violence against Jews as Jews. We focus on protecting the rights of Jews, not a state. At the same time, the Jerusalem Declaration holds open a critical space for discussion 
and debate. It helps us to distinguish between cases where criticism of Israel qualifies as anti-Semitism and where it does not. For example, we may oppose or we may support the movement to boycott Israel. But as the Jerusalem Declaration makes clear, it is not in itself anti-Semitic. By upholding universal principles, the Jerusalem Declaration contributes to an inclusive strategy which aims to unite struggles against anti-Semitism with struggles against Islamophobia and other forms of religious intolerance and discrimination. Ultimately, it is this universal fight against all forms of intolerance, bigotry and discrimination, which will enable us to forge a new social contract to advance the fight against anti-Semitism.